Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Burns Takeout. My name is Amy Gillette. I'm a collections researcher. And today, I'm so happy to be joining you from my office space at the beautiful Barnes Foundation, where I hope you'll be able to join us soon. Now, today, we're headed into room number 12, which Albert Barnes had called the American Room. To look at this central painting right here, let's zoom in a bit, entitled Christ and the Woman of Samaria, painted by Horace Pippin in the year 1940, as we can see from his signature. Now, Within this room, we see it bookended by two other paintings here and here by Pippin, um, various uh, um, pieces of metalwork of wrought iron. And as you know, Barnes did arrange all of his wall ensembles on, on visual terms. And I think it's wonderful the extent to which this uh, Keelix escutcheon down here looks so much like these silvery clouds that are drifting across this fuchsia sky, the livid fuchsia sky in Pippin's image. And then we've got other images by um, immigrant Jewel Pasquin down here, Ernest Lawson, another self-taught artist like Pippin, um, Albert, Albert Nolte, Maurice Prendergast. Here is Albert Barnes's very dear friend, his self-portrait William Glackens over here. Um, on the same register as this little image of two sphinxes by Glacken's nine-year-old daughter, um, Lena. And so looking out clearly, Barnes has placed Pippin in this context of American artists with some amount of, um, of self-teaching going on here. And so let's, um, let's look a little bit closer at what that means. So, and, and what um, Pippin was looking to accomplish with this image. And so to look more at the image itself, let's go on in. Here's, here's our closer image. And we again have these silver clouds in this absolutely glorious fuchsia sky that he's painted. We've got Christ looking imperial regal in this purple cloak over his bright white robe encountering um, this woman of Samaria. She's got um, a jug for the well over here. Um, I love that the signature, the pavement, the well, the, um, the Middle Eastern buildings in the background are the same silver. And as much as from a distance, the trees, the leaves, the grass look black, we can see how um, richly in detail they're picked out here. And so before we move on to look more at Pippin's style, let's look more at what story this is depicting. And it's an episode from um, chapter four, actually, in the Gospel of John. And so what it says is Christ had come to pass through Samaria, and he's gone to a well, and a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him an eternal spring, um, a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. And so, you know, this episode, it says, is supposed to take place around noon. But I think it's brilliant the way in which Pippin has depicted it as it looks like dawn or at twilight to electrify this moment between foreigners where this woman, um, a Samaritan who it says nothing is common in Jews, has recognized in him um, the living God and this drawing water from the well as a kind of prefiguration of baptism as a prerequisite, according to Christian belief, um, of entry into heaven and eternal life. And so as, um, as for the personal idiom in which Pippin has depicted it, let's look a little bit more at the artist himself. And here he is um, around the time he painted Christ and the Woman of Samaria at the Pyramid Club in North Philadelphia at 15th and Girard, um, a club for black professionals. And he's talking with Albert Barnes. 
Now, Pippin was uh, a local artist. He was, he grew up nearby in Westchester and was a war hero. He'd served on the front lines in France in World War One in an all-black regiment. And like a lot of other American artists, was exposed to French art, modern art um, at that time. And having gravely injured his right arm in combat, he was able on pension um, to work on his art um, for some time thereafter, and he was a self-taught artist. He attracted the notice of Barnes, um, displaying his work at the Carlin Gallery in Philadelphia in the late 1930s, and ended up studying at the Barnes Foundation. And something that had compelled Barnes about the work of Pippin was the extent to which, here, let's go back just a sec to look at Christ and the Woman of Samaria, the extent to which his images did make use of old masters, such as this version, old master version of the same subject that you can find in gallery number 14, but put it in his own style, his own perspective, um, made it modern and, and personal. And um, something else that Barn Barnes had appreciated about the work of Pippin was that self-taught aspect of it, much like we're going to look actually at another picture on the same wall in, in Gallery 14 here by Henri Rousseau, a French self-taught artist, early 1900s, this image of scouts attacked by a tiger. And I think that in a lot of ways it looks similar to Pippin where Rousseau has staged this crisp um, dramatic action against this almost curtain or screen of dense but wonderfully accurately rendered jungle foliage. Um, to make the, the action scene up close personal and with uh, what Barnes understood as this kind of authentic, almost spiritual force to it that wasn't bright out or academic or anything like that. And so um, let's go back then to Pippin's Samaritan Woman. And another aspect that Barnes believed Pippin had brought to this was blending it together with African-American spiritual music, in this case, a hymn entitled Christ and the Woman at the Well. And it's something that um, that Barnes had believed brought, again, this kind of authentic force, as it were, to the art of Pippin. And I suppose we may notice as well that um, Pippin has made the figures look Middle Eastern, and whether this is a means of representing historical accuracy, because this does, after all, take place in the Middle East, or um, self-representation in a spiritual picture, a lot like the way in which the same characters in the Italian picture look Italian, we don't necessarily know the precise ingredients Pippin was bringing to this. Um, that being said, he was himself spiritual Pippin was, and he certainly had a brilliantly expressive style that I think causes this encounter, this, again, to use the word, electric encounter between Christ and the Sar Samaritan woman, live for viewers, I, I think, throughout the 20th century and today, um, in, in a way that comes alive for us in, when we see it in the galleries. And I do hope that you'll be able to come to the Barnes and see it soon. And thanks so much for watching today. That's it for today's Barnes Takeout. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.